you in hell, Teddy! I'll see you in hell! <laughs> All right, I think we're getting the signal there. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Civil War Spoiler Cast, Part 3. We've all just been doing Bob's Burgers impressions, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. Oh my goodness, Bobby! So, uh, anyway. <laughs> On that note. Spoiler Spoiler Cast trilogy, right? Is what? this the final installment of the No trilogy? promises. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. We no like promises. to ramble. We, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the sequel hook at the end. So, uh... Well, I'm not a cliffhanger. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I said. Okay. So snappy. And it'll be the last. <laughs> <laughs> so, the end of a trilogy with, uh, with Captain America presumably here uh, leaving off into Infinity Wars. What do you guys think of? Does this wrap caps portion of the story up nicely for those that thought this was a Captain America movie. Uh, what do you think of the ramifications as we lead into Infinity Wars? I kind of hope they do Secret Wars. Because that's the way that it is right now, is they can have, you know, like this group of secret heroes that go around and, um, you know... <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> do just right, wait, 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 stuff. What he's trying to say is... Tony's got his team, and when Tony doesn't get clearance from the government, he sends in the secret Avengers to do the job. Exactly. Do the dirty work? Yeah. The point of That's what board. I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, got so. I got your back. I, it's like, oh, we're going to sign this accord, but I'm going to have a secret team. What was the point, Tony? Like, are, are you referring to Secret Wars or Secret Warriors? Secret Warriors. Okay, Secret Warriors are doing an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. right now. <laughs> Just that that's I a did, whole not even connected to a bad no. thing, so we got off topic. It's okay. Anyway. Trevor Reboot. It's Trevor Reboot. Trevor Reboot. It is, but it's again. not in the movies. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that was Nick Fury putting together a team of young. Do you mean Warriors or Wars? Well, uh, you know, it's a mix of both. Uh, I mean, warriors. I mean, they could they could mix it together because I they mean, can do whatever I, they want. Listen, this, the comics are just source material. They don't have to stick no, yeah. to any of that. And I mean, if they're gonna have as many people in the Infinity Wars series, as the Russo brothers have said, then they're going to need everybody from the TV series, uh, everybody from the Netflix multiple series. Um, you know, if they end up making completely different movies, everybody from the movies that they're making now and that they're going to make are probably going to be in Infinity War. Do you really think they're going to bring, like, Jessica Jones and Daredevil from the Netflix series into the fold on the big screen in Infinity Wars, though? It, it is possible. It's actually in the contracts for all the Netflix stars and all the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stars. They they do have to appear in the movies if they're asked to. Um, the biggest problem with doing that is the TV shows are... It's just the scheduling with how they're filmed. I know a lot of people think there's this, some major divide between Marvel TV, Marvel movies, and there, maybe there is, but really it's hard to sync up the filming schedules for a TV series in a movie. And, you know, without having major plot points get released or, you know, revealing who lives, who dies. So, maybe they'll bring him in. Yeah, maybe they Kevin, won't. Kevin Feige is actually like... Uh, Kevin Marvel. Remember when, uh, what's Wait, that? Kevin Marvel. Kevin Marvel. Tweet, Kevin Kevin Marvel. tweet at us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tweet us, Kev! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, he, I think when, like, Daredevil Season 1 was blowing up after that came out, I think he was, like, asked about it, and he had mentioned, like, uh, sometime after it had come out that he actually hadn't even, like, seen it at that point. So it seems like they don't maybe think about the TV side as much as as we think they do, according uh, just based on those statements. But but at, at least Marvel's got the stuff together. I know we talked about it before, where the the movies and the TV shows are kind of like the same Correct. universe, whereas DC is messing everything up. Well, they are they are different with, universes in that with their with TV DC. shows yeah. and their movies. Because I swear, if anyone other then, uh... I'm just laughing because I know something great's coming. For, oh, what's this? Grant Houston? No, well, I'm, Stephen, I'm already... Stephen Amell? Yeah, Stephen Amell. If it's anyone funny. other than Stephen Amell ever portrays Green Arrow in a movie, I'm... I need to say, not really I, happy. a good actor in a I'm, CW show does not equate to a good actor in a big... Very budget. true, it's very true. It's, it's, and so, no I one's accusing you don't know of being a good actor, I, let's be honest. Is, <laughs> well, I don't think that would work as well as your Stephen Amell is Green Arrow, and Grant Gustin is The Flash, and I didn't see BBS, but I'm very disappointed that this Ezra Miller uh, played sure. The Flash. Um, okay, everyone knows I'm like... Firmly on the side of Marvel as far as the Marvel vs. DC war goes. 
But I really feel like they're both doing their shared universe as well. They're doing them very differently. DC's got their multiverse, which is, you know, fine. They don't have to worry about what this show's doing, what that movie's doing. They have these characters existing in the multiverse, and that's fine. Marvel having the shared universe is fine. I think both of them are doing a very good job of keeping that balance and making it so that you don't have to watch the others to enjoy one. Yeah, I'm with, so, you, I'm with him on that. As much as I, you know, if, if I could legitimately bash DC, I would, because I'm a Marvel guy, but... I will admit that they're doing pretty good with this. They're keeping the separation, and I think they're doing a good job, and I think Ezra Miller could be a really good Flash. So Batman is my favorite uh, superhero uh, I, of anyone and you know, in, on either side, and I think Marvel is so far ahead uh, that it's not even close. But A few probably... years ago, before I started watching Arrow on TV, I would have agreed with you, but Green Arrow is sure. so, at the top now. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that, it's a popular show. There's no denying it. Stephen Amell, tweet me. <laughs> Tweet him, Steve. Or no. Uh, Iron Patriot. No, uh, with Amel. Amel. I think Amel. There's no yeah. R in it. It's A-R-N-E-L, isn't it? No, it's A-M-E-L. It's Amel. No R. Okay. See, Marvel guy. What were you asking? Like, what was the first question, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how it got there. Uh, okay. I actually the tie into Infinity it. Wars. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I asked if they were going to bring the Netflix oh. people into oh, the Infinity yeah, yeah, Wars. Yeah. Jamie. I had a comment about how the movie ended. I don't know that it really... Ties in with Infinity Wars, but throw it at us. <laughs> okay, so I felt that they ended it uh, differently than they usually would. They didn't wrap it up all nicely and make it perfect. And uh, Terry Schwartz from IGN said it this way: they um, this movie had a comma at the end of it instead of a period. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I actually, I actually enjoyed com- it that way. I completely but, agree because yeah. I felt like a lot of times the Marvel movies. Um, they kind of lean on their own, mm-hmm. despite being shared. And this one was like, okay, what's going to happen next? A lot mm-hmm. of times, like Winter Soldier, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of good. Or, right. you know, First Avenger, for the most part. Obviously, there's a little bit of cliffhanger. But I agree completely. That's a really good point. Yeah. I, I Which, there is some a bit of news that came out shortly after Civil War was released that Infinity War is not going to be named Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. Correct. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm kind of... They're going to rename one of them. Well, what I'm wondering is if maybe... In the comics, after the Civil War happened, it was left in very much the same state. There were t- different factions of Avengers, some operating legally, some operating legally. And I'm wondering if maybe the two Infinity War movies are really going to show us two different sides of the story from two different teams of Avengers operating. Ah. Yeah, that's, because that's kind of where we're left now. Yeah. Iron Man's team and Cap's team are operating very differently, and no, that could be where the Now, Infinity Wars like, is going to be against Thanos, right? Thanos invading Earth. So that secret invasion happens. The secret invasion, <laughs> I think, will probably happen after because they they got to get scrolls back first. I hope. Not. So I hate it. Secret invasion. As it currently stands, Infinity War Part Two working title is like the it, it is the last scheduled film. Obviously, they're going to schedule more of these, but um, I agree. And then they did come out with that and say they are probably changing those uh, those titles or at least one of them. Um, but I think Infinity Wars is kind of the headline. Good save, Adam. Um, <laughs> Iron Patriot slash uh, Rhodey here. Getting hurt towards the end of the movie. Uh, Get, just getting hurt. Just, just a little boo-boo. Just, just, a, just, just a dude. Just, just but a scratch. Just well, but a mere scratch. <laughs> so he, he, him with his legs. Obviously, he's got, he's got some paralysis going on there. Not dying. The direction to not kill him off. I totally respected that. Yeah. I felt the intensity from seeing him have to live with what's going on instead of just killing him off, which seems to be the obvious choice, and then bringing him back later, which they always do in superhero movies, was a lot more profound than the other way. Yeah. What did you guys think of, of that? Anywhere that I looked before the movie came out, um, people were saying, oh, yeah, who's going to die? Is it going to be Captain America? Is it going to be somebody else? I mean, in the comics, they killed off... Was Goliath. Goliath. <laughs> yeah, Goliath. Um, but I agree that I think that um, leaving him paralyzed like had a, a heavier tone than if you killed him off. He's got to live with it, and Tony has to live with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 I do want to point something out, too. Yeah. In the comics, killing Goliath was seen as Tony's group crossing that moral event horizon. They were the villains at that point, mm-hmm. as far as the audience was concerned. The writers still treated it like Tony's group was right. But there's no denying, they murdered a superhero. You know, if they had done that in the movie, we wouldn't have been left with an ambiguous kind of who was right, who was wrong, or a middle ground at all. It would have been firmly, whichever side killed another hero, they're the bad guys. They were wrong. I think that was a very smart choice of the Russos to not kill someone off, 
still have some serious consequences, Rhodey being paralyzed, but if they had killed him off, it, it would have really crossed one of those teams over to the other side. I think that's coming in, in Infinity War Part 1, I honestly. Think it shows a lot about how there's real consequences in this. They're not just... You know, having an argument. It's a real full blown fight. And Can we nobody... spoil Batman versus Superman, by the way, for Gene? No, I honestly <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Spoilers are possible with Adam the spoil her. Oh! Oh! Yeah! oh, yeah, that's right. I, have, I still haven't seen it, but I know how it ends. Thanks, Adam. Oh! Wow. You hate to see that. Who this man? I know about BBS is. You know, they're fighting, and then, oh, your mom's Martha, my mom's Martha, let's kiss and make up. And that's then... what it is, basically. And then Superman yeah. dies and is going to come back in the next one. Yeah. So, that's, whatever. Uh, I agree with you. There's real-life consequences. That seemed like it had much more of an emotional thing with me. And even Rhodes kind of goes, this sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, like, he's, that's a horrible, horrible thing to live with. Yeah, Brandon, also, they also don't want to really be fighting each other. It's more like, I don't know, like the, the part at the airport when Black Widow and... Steve Hawkeye are fighting. Yeah, still friends after this, right? So that's a great point. Let's let's get into that. Scarlet Witch blast. Black Widow. Black Widow away. You're you're pulling your punches. punches. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I I liked that sequence so much that if. I never at, at any time thought that they were trying to kill each other. It right. just seemed like they were trying to kind of kick each other's, you know, what. And it, it, it never got crazy until the Rhodes part. Um, and it was also, the not, not to mention, I thought it was the best action part of the movie. I thought it was the funniest part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you guys think of the overall, let me go to Seth with this one, just the mix of everything at that airport. The airport scene? Yes. Oof. I mean, I think it lived up to the hype that I was hearing about it, that it's like one of the best sequences in a superhero movie, period. And Completely it's, agree. And mm-hmm. it's like, it, it, there's uh, just, it, instead of it being so, kind of a cleanly choreographed thing, it's just like a mad scramble, and everyone's constantly going around between everybody. It's just like, shows off everybody's abilities so well. It just, uh, uh, it, was, it was incredible. And just like, every, every time something great happened and you're seeing this great thing, there's some other incredible thing to see around the corner. We got to see Spider-Man, really in action and we got to see his 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 dyna- seeing his dynamic with some of the the hard more hardened characters like when he falcon takes him and launches him off and like you have the right to remain silent <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like his, and, his humor was oh great. oh and his interaction with captain america is one of my favorite bits of the entire movie when he's like oh you got heart kid where are you from and that, yeah. that thing is just like Oh, they're enemies. Those, they're are, those, two, enemies, those you know? two of my, yeah. those are like two of my favorites. You know, Captain America especially, and that was just such a charming encounter that really stood out to me. But the whole thing, I Giant Man, I love the big, <laughs> the big slow movie. It reminded me like a like a Harryhausen movie or something. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I assume you might be a War of the Gargantuas fan. Do you, I am you a like War of the Gargantuas fan. <laughs> it's War of the Gambit. You're fixed with the Gargantuas. And some Attack on Titan in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gingerbread man scene from Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was like, hey! He didn't move like yeah. that. Like, hey. <laughs> See, the thing that I didn't, the, drop yeah. the thing that I didn't like though is even before I went and <clears throat> saw the movie, it's kind of like a DC thing where they release toys that like ruin the plot a little bit. I went and I was picking up a, a pop vinyl and I looked and I saw that they had a six-inch pop vinyl of Ant Man and I was like, wait a second, is he gonna like? get bigger in the movie for some reason i thought we knew that though i don't know why it was a big deal it was released ahead of time but before that i don't know there were action figures released ahead of time that showed ant-man in this giant form i see people freaked out over it. yeah but you can't trust the toy lines i mean lego sets have uh captain marvel in the toy sets right now for civil war scenes that she's not in civil war yeah (laughs) Well, yeah, I don't but know. that's different I, from showing a character in a completely not different. Not so much. Yeah. I, I didn't think this was overly spoilery. I don't no, know. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, and it wasn't like the biggest part of the movie, so it didn't bother me. Uh, like no, with, no Batman no versus, with Batman versus <laughs> Superman, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> with Batman versus Superman, they completely ruined the whole Doomsday thing. Oh, they ruined it during the Super Bowl commercial where they yeah. showed him. Yeah, that's And it. I was like. When did they have Doomsday? Why is he here? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh my god, they ruined the movie! Yeah, yeah. So. It just it felt like with this airport scene they were again, I know we keep going to BVS, but like they were turning it on its head and like, this is how you make superheroes fight each other. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like, take a lesson, DC. To be I, fair, they had no way of actually taking shots at DC since <clears> the movies were made so close together, but 
when you yeah, unintentionally manage to coming, point out yeah. everything wrong with Batman vs Superman. Yeah, that's pretty. Funny. I, we also knew everything about BVS probably like two years ago. Like they, yeah. there were no <laughs> secrets about that movie, yeah. so they were probably adapting as they went. I, I absolutely loved how the whole Air Force scene. Spider Man was like, like your stereotypical like fanboy. It was like oh, us. If oh any God. of us yeah. were yeah. Like, yeah. like, hey guys, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. Oh, 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 I gotta oh, impress oh, Mr. Stark. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh -huh. um, you know, his his lines like, oh man, you got a metal arm. That's awesome. Yeah. How, his accent was great. Oh my God. And when he, he's uh, British, yeah, he's right? British, like Andrew. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, it's good. Winter Soldier threw something at him, and then he throws it back like, "Hey, you forgot this." Yes, <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, it, there was a comic book, obviously a bunch of comic book callbacks, as this is rooted in that. But uh, the Iron and Cap scene at the end, with uh, Stark hitting Roger's shield, as you kind of see it through the fence there, mm, through the hole in the wall. Uh, um, Papa, that callback, that scene. Like, what did you think of that, resurrecting it from the comic to the actual big screen? That was cool. I always love um, different filming techniques, different um, ways to portray, you know, action and live action. Um, it, it's not just necessarily, you know, through our eyes. I like st taking something, like, it almost felt like they took, like, the panel and put it on top and put it over the camera lens. I like that. I like different styles like that. I like seeing yeah. different things happen as opposed to, you know, just how we would see it through our own eyes. I really like um, when superhero movies mix it up, but when you're taking something as iconic as Civil War and you're putting it on the screen, um, I want to see, like, specific scenes from the comics. Of course. I mean, I've, I'm not, I haven't been reading comics since I was, like, super, super little, I've just kind of um, recently gotten into Civil War, but, like, if you read something like that, it, like, it sticks in your head. So then when you see it on screen, it just makes the movie, like, uh, ten times better. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about it in part one. Um, what did you guys think of Zemo and not making him more of a brute force, but more so of an intellectual guy it's who's pulling the strings? Yeah. Yes. I liked it. He is like my it. favorite... MCU villain so far, honestly, um, aside from maybe Kingpin from the Daredevil series, if we're including the entire canon sure. of the Marvel Universe. He was smart. He was smart enough to know that he couldn't take them directly. He was also smart enough to realize that even if you do attack them directly, they're just going to rebuild. There's more of them popping up. You know, they're going to come back. He did, he attacked their, their hearts. He broke their spirit and forced them against each other. And it really says something that this is the first time we've seen an MCU villain win. How about like, that that uh, that line towards the end with Black Panther, where he's like, "Really, I knew I could you know, yeah, beat them yeah, myself, yeah. Uh, or myself. I knew that they had to yeah. kill he, each other." Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest. I actually, I felt kind of sad for him. He, I mean, yeah. the guy was a monster, there but some, you know, with, with watching him listening to his wife's voicemail. And, you know, actually going to kill himself. Like, actually trying to kill himself, if not for Black Panther's in intervention. This was a very tragic character. This guy was... He lost everything. He'd been turned into a weapon by his government. He wanted to go home, and he's lost his entire family. It's quite the reinvention from comic book Zemo. Yeah. He was one of the World War II cap villains. Right. So they totally... This, and he's not a big iconic villain, so, so I guess that's I, okay. And it was, it was re yeah, it was really cool. I was into. It. I, th I thought he definitely rose above the, you know, uh, you know, the the Marvel villain problem that they they sometimes have. He definitely rose above that. I don't know if I'd say he's my favorite, but he is up there. I'm yeah. still up all night to get Loki. That's just my thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I felt like he was very kind of like Fight Clubby, <laughs> where he was very psychological, and you didn't know his end game until. Yeah, he was a little mysterious. Yeah, that's for sure. Totally, yeah. I liked his, uh, um, forgive me for not knowing the actor's name, I thought he, he gave Daniel Bruhl. Daniel Bruhl. Gave a great from performance. Glorious Bastards. Yeah. Yeah. He was in the Glorious Bastards? Yeah. yeah. He and was the, like the German the spy. Spy. The the they made a movie oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought yeah, I recognized yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. He was also in Rush with um, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Oh, Zemo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, Conspiracy! Yeah. <laughs> Something else about Zemo, and they left him alive at the end, and, uh, you know, like you said, he said he couldn't take them on himself. He tried to get out, though. In the, in the comics, he actually does eventually put together a group called the Masters of Evil, which hopefully they won't use that name if they introduce him in the movies. But <laughs> well, uh, I think it's tough. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see him actually, you know, 
put well, together some sort of anti-Avengers. I was going to say, you know? would you like to see him accidentally glue a purple hood to his head? <laughs> Which <laughs> yes! Oops! <laughs> <laughs> Which happens in the comics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's something to be said about the comics. Again, they are the source material. I've never been one to be like, well, this is how it happened in the comics, so this is how it should happen in the movies. And I love that they're making this its own thing, the MCU. I love that it, it doesn't have to do, it just, you know, originates from there. And uh, they're just doing such a good job with it. Every movie raises my level of expectations. And just every time, I'm like, they've got to let me down sometime. Mar <laughs> we're 13 movies in? 13? 13? I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they haven't let me down yet. It, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, I grew, I grew up on these books. I, ever since I, for as long as I can remember, I've been reading comic books. I'm one of those guys that you would probably expect to be like, no, it was like this in the comics, you can't do it in the movies if you don't have right. to like the comics. Honestly, I'm smart enough to know that there are two different mediums. Things that work in the comic don't work on screen. A lot of things that people were complaining about with Civil War, not enough heroes and such, Civil War included hundreds. Yeah. Plus now we get two hundreds. stories out of this, right? Yeah. And we, we get to we see get more a, stories, a new take on it. We get... A much better take, to be honest. I mean, I, there's a lot of fans I know looking back and saying Civil War was an amazing arc, but when it came out, it was panned no, horribly. It's cr it's crap. It, and, it, you know, and the Russos are, very well are directing again, uh, a, Avengers: Infinity War one and two, presumably the titles for those. Yeah, and so, the same screenwriters too. Correct. Ah, that's they, more, it was the Captain more, America team. Like, they do it best. I love they do the it Captain best. America yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think those are the best. Uh, yeah. Does anyone think otherwise? Yeah. Just I, I don't know. honestly, I saw. First Avenger, uh, the first Avenger when it came out, and I was with a whole bunch of my army buddies, and all of us kind of laughed and were like, eh. <laughs> "It was orange, What kind sorry. of soldiers are you?" I'm just kidding. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, Thank you none, of us, none of us really, really cared much about it. Oh, I love the. I, I no, love what I'm saying is, really which love. Marvel movies do you like better? Guardians of the Galaxy. That's a same here. Yeah. Oh, Guardians. Yeah. And maybe yeah. original Iron Man. But original Iron so, Man is still it's got its own. really, really good. Guardians, I'm really like, when we talk, like, I always forget that it's part, like, I know it is, like, in my head, but when I talk like, about I, Marvel, I'm like, Iron Man, Captain America movies, <laughs> Avengers, and then I'm like, wait, Guardians. Oh my god, Guardians! Yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to see Guardians cross over with everything, probably. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. The Russo's yeah. didn't confirm that. Yeah. Guardians 2, you know, now that Civil War is done, Guardians 2 is going to be our next link, like, our next biggest link to Infinity War. That's It'll gonna, move the that, story along right, most. That's going to yeah. bring, bring us closer to Thanos and whatever yeah. hellish plan Thanos has, uh, you know, for Earth. They have, uh, the creators and such have heavily implied that Doctor Strange is going to have one of the Infinity Gems. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see yeah. that. We so, talked about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, Who is? Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Doctor Strange. Ah, yeah. yes. We talked about it in the car on the way here. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, so, that being said, we'll kind of wrap things up here. Uh, well, we've got X-Men next in terms of spoiler cast, oh. so that'll be exciting. Trevor's going to write our official review for that. Uh, we've got Star Trek in July, and uh, then we got our fall season. Uh, so as far as MCU films go, uh, Doctor Strange this fall, Guardians just a, almost a, about a year from to today. Wow, that's exciting. Oh, Guardians is my favorite of, of the MCU Whoa. films. Yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming, not, not too short after that in July. I'm looking forward to that one. Thor at the end of next year. 2018, we get Black Panther solo movie. Oh, man, that's going to be so good. Mm -hmm. Amazing. May 2018, we get Avengers Infinity War Part 1. July, Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's going to be great, too. Uh, Captain Marvel, I'm very intrigued to see. That's 2019. And going all the way to May 2019, the last of the announced films, we've got Infinity Wars Part 2. Let me kind of go down the line. Uh, I'm going to start with Sam. What what are you most looking forward to of the upcoming films? Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm so pumped for that. Guardians of the Galaxy, wait. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor. Honestly, <laughs> Doctor Strange I is... I was distracting you, Terry Blossom. <laughs> 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 Tits up, bro. Yeah. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. It yeah. takes everything I love about the Marvel movies and throws it into one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, Trevor. You said Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's got me... The magic really, Batman. Really... <laughs> <laughs> Very, very curious about Doctor Strange. It, I don't know. There's just something about the trailer. I don't know a lot about Doctor Strange. Yeah, I, neither do I. I so no, I'm really don't. excited. Right, and I think it was probably the same with Black Panther before this movie, yeah. right? Yeah, I, yeah. Unfortunately. But now... Catman. 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 Cat 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 you know. Catman and Magic Batman. Cat Stop Cat it! Yeah. Seth, what's most intriguing to you of these films? Uh, hmm. That's a very tough call. There's so little we know. I mean, I would maybe say Avengers, but we still don't really quite have an idea what's going to be in there. Of the ones that are, like, in the next year or so, I would say Spider-Man Homecoming. 
That is that is a very very close second for me with with yeah. Guardians. Uh, I have a special place in my heart for them. Uh, Jamie, um, I'm also gonna have to go with Guardians too. I loved I loved the first movie and the soundtrack was pretty much phenomenal. My I favorite like music track. already. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> there was some record I've store day. wanted that. Yeah. <laughs> I have the Disney. vinyl and the CD. Stop oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. We have the CD yeah. which the deluxe which came with that soundtrack and then also the musical score, which oh, was okay. pretty good too. So yeah. That's awesome. um, those songs are always in my head. Anytime I hear one on the radio, I'm like, Guardians! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I'm going to write an article, actually, in the coming weeks. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do five or ten things, five or ten ways to improve on Guardians, which is hard, but I think soundtrack is going to be something that they have to meet expectations on. Oh, mm -hmm. gosh, Awesome Mix Volume 2 is going to have the floor minds. <laughs> That's going to be the number one song record of the week. Uh, Gene. Guardians. Guardians. Nick. Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh, he's my third favorite comic character. I've already gotten Daredevil, my top. Who's an awesome Netflix series. Second is Moon Knight, heavily rumored for a Netflix series. Fingers crossed. Really? Moon Knight? Oh, Netflix Moon series. Moon Knight's been rumored. Oh, that'd be awesome. I appreciate it. But Black Panther, he belongs <laughs> on the big screen, and I'm really excited. They got Ryan Coogler directing, they did Creed. Oh, what a great, oh, what a yeah. great get. Yeah. Yeah. This is just Creed, Fruitvale Station, man. Chadwick Boseman, we've already seen he's incredible. We're two years away from that, and I'm like, come I on, know, get me and now. it's just like, <laughs> come on, guys, quicker. Damn you, Marvel. Uh, Pavlok, I'm very excited to hear your most intrigued movie or the one you're most looking forward to. Oh, definitely Guardians. It's got Kurt Russell, the biggest badass in Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> That's alone. How can you not be excited for that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I... Well, mine is Guardians. Uh, Spider-Man, like I said, very, very close second. Amazing, you know, Thor kind of gets buried in here a little bit. Isn't that something? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the Thor movies, really. Thor standalone movies. Thor's I saw the first out. one. I really love it. I saw the first one. I didn't see the second one. I think it may be because Thor already has a few, and we're just excited for True. Black Panther and this new Spider-Man and just yeah, everything. Yeah, the common theme yet. here is... Yeah, Brand exactly. New. Let's get some Same new excitement. blood. It's largely the new characters, yes. aside from the Guardians, who we're going to get a bunch of new characters. So. I feel like Thor is the new Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's just face oh, Aquaman. Yeah. No, okay, no. Out of, that was a big statement. I, I no, did say of, this was going to get violent at some point. <laughs> and we got like two seconds left. So. Out, of, out of everybody like in the DC Universe, Aquaman is like the least appreciated. And I feel like Thor's... I don't think he's there around. yet. I mean... Thor is getting that kind of rap, though. Not his movies, yet. his movies are like the lowest grossing movies, aren't they? Uh, well, if you include Hulk, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk's, Hulk's a completely different thing. Though. Wait, no, it's up to you. Did Ant-Man outgross Thor movies? Yeah, yeah. Like, really. So, Ant-Man did really. Did, I don't. Ant-Man um, made like. No. Yeah. Ant-Man made like five hundred nineteen million yeah. worldwide. I, I think it's the lowest grossing Marvel. I don't think it was lowest. No, 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 it was actually no, no. surprised. No, it's not lowest. They were really surprised high. at how well it it's did. It's not lowest. Yes. But I know it's, that it's down there. Both. I know it's down there. Which yeah, but when you've got four of the billion yeah, dollar movies in there, you're going to be down the yeah. list. You're saying relatively speaking. Relatively. That's yeah. what it is. So, so I don't know where Thor stacks up there. Uh, yeah, we only looked at the top five. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do that next spoiler cast. But very interesting. Uh, I had a blast with this. This was a good talk. Uh, check out part one and two if you haven't already for this spoiler cast. Uh, we'll go over to everyone here where we can find you on social media and maybe just a quick plug for something you have worked on or something you are working on for the website. Um, we're actually going to start at this end. Uh, Pavlok. Yeah, uh, at Jeffrey Pavs on Twitter, we got our top 25 Wii U games coming up. Put, yes. a, put the list together. This guy helped me with it. That girl helped me with it. Uh, also, Jeff Beta, who is sadly not with us right now, he gave us a hand with that, so we got that coming. He, he is alive. <laughs> yeah, he is alive. Yeah. Sadly, that, no. right. sadly not. Beta's not with us anymore. Rip Beta. Bruner's dead, but Beta is... <laughs> I'm all the Jeff you need, let's How be serious. He is all the Jeff you need. <laughs> Nick Ramirez, Twitter, and uh, something for the website. Uh, you can find me at dare underscore two underscore geek on Twitter. My wife came up with that. She's wonderful, isn't she? Thank you, uh, Liz. <laughs> Tweet us, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> we might get that one. <laughs> we, will, we will. I'm sure we will. Um, <laughs> Our track record is terrible. <laughs> <It's so laughs> right? um, I have suggested reading. I've got a suggested reading. I just put up for uh, Winter Soldier. Yes. And I'll have a new one coming up for Black Panther. Both amazing characters. And if you're watching the Civil War spoiler guys, I'm assuming you've seen them in the movie, so... Uh, you can check those out, see where you can find out a little bit more about those guys. So those are our Geek Suggested Readings. Nick basically takes a character or a topic <laughs> and gives you uh, a bunch of good starting points uh, if you're new to the series like a lot of people are. Uh, Jamie. Uh, on Twitter, I am at Jamie Lynn Leroy. And let's see, I just, for, for May the 4th, I just wrote um, an article 
about awesome Star Wars tattoos. Um, I also write our weekly castle review, and the finale is next week, uh, May 16th, so look for my review on the 17th. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, welcome back, Gene. So you're easing back in here. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Do we know our Twitter? <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually know my Twitter today. <laughs> what is it? It's uh, at Williams2290. Fantastic. Uh, a little bit division stuff maybe coming up from Yeah, the, from I know it's a little bit late because division has been out since March. Yes. Uh, I'm going to write up a review for that, why I think it's kind of dying off already and what they need to do to uh, up that. Okay. Also, I'll probably do something coming up about the... Uh, New uh, DLC that just dropped today for Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, we got two new operators and a new map and a whole bunch of other aesthetics. Awesome. We were talking about it before. It sounds really um, enticing to me. Trevor. At Trevor underscore white underscore. I didn't mess it up that time. You did good underscore. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did good too well. Um, I'm going to be writing the X-Men Apocalypse trailer review. Oh, I'm very, very excited for that movie. And the review for the movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I did write the trailer review. <laughs> yes, so yeah. the official uh, review. Come on, I was so close. <laughs>